these are the pretty pictures of don't worry, it's not their handwriting. We had somebody else write in. Because Those are my, that's my handwriting, Casey. That is, what, that is yours. Oh, okay. Andy, did you write yours? No, this is okay. exactly, by the way, what we used to do for President Obama. We would fill out, we'd get the best, per, you know, best handwriting person here and fill out the first round, and then he would do the rest. All right, well, go off to your individual brackets. We will fill a bracket out. Also, we are taking your questions through, uh, through social, excuse me, get in. Get your questions. We will get them in periodically. You could tweet us any questions that you would like to Andy or Smitty. They, of course, will have their crystal ball out. Let's start, though, Andy, with you, and let's see where you go. Take us through what you have, because you've written okay, the yes. first round to cut down some of the time, because it would take you a long time to write the rest. And let us know kind of where you sit at that first part of that top part of that east bracket. Okay, so keep in mind, my penmanship is horrible, so this was not my handwriting. <laughs> All right, let's just start up here in the east. Uh, first of all, NC Central seems like they're always in this uh, bracket, and uh, they do not want to. There's a great quote, by the way, by their head coach. He does not want to face Zion Williamson. We'll see if that ends up happening. I love the fact that UCF is going against, by the way, a VCU team that Marcus Evans got hurt, did not play uh, extended minutes in their uh, loss in the A-10 tournament, and that's kind of why they got upset by Rhode Island in the quarters. Taco Fall, remember him? He's seven six. He told me actually in the preseason, really seven seven. Phenomenal talent. Would be great to see him advance here. So let me turn around here. Uh, I went with an upset here. Richie McKay, the Liberty Flames, with an upset over Mississippi State. You got to pick at least one five twelve. I've got this one here. Liberty over Mississippi State. St. Louis just getting in over the, in the eight ten with their victory on Sunday over St. Bonaventure in thrilling fashion. But I like the Hokies because Justin Robinson's going to be back. Their point guard. Over here, I've got Maryland knocking off Belmont. Yes, Belmont got in as an at-large out of the OVC. The selection committee chair, Bernard Muir, talked about the offensive efficiency of the Bruins. Well, they can certainly shoot it. I think they'll get by Temple and Fran Dunphy. But Maryland's got so much size with Bruno Fernando and Justin Smith. I think they advance. And then I got an upset. You've got a controversial team right now with LSU. Will Wade's not coaching. The school's not allowing that to happen. I think Yale, okay, will, no pun intended, outsmart LSU, okay, and advance for James Jones. They knocked off Harvard to win the Ivy. Minnesota, Richard Pitino gets his dad's old school, Rick Pitino. I think they advance. And Michigan State takes out Bradley as the Spartans, certainly hot after winning the Big Ten. So, mark this down, book it. It's going to be right. And thank you so much for not actually writing it when you gave it to us. And I know <laughs> we're over here, and as we shift over to Smitty's bracket, I know he knows that we've seen the 15 take the two eight times. Last time, 2050, you remember who it was? Uh, yeah, I do. Middle Tennessee. Yeah, at Michigan State. I didn't remember correct. I was calling that game. Okay, Casey. thanks so for I'm reminding just trying me. To, just trying to make sure your memory was still good at this age, Smitty. What do you got <laughs> so here? You got Andy laughing at me. But I got Duke right here, and I think they're being new NC Central, and I think NC Central – Coach Mold has done a nice job of getting his team to the tournament. I got VCU. The reason why, and I love Taco Falls. I just think the pressure of Taco, the pressure of VCU takes him out of the game because of all the pressing. That's why I'm gonna go with VCU. And I got Mississippi State, Virginia Tech. This is gonna be a good one when they get a chance to play. Maryland, I'm with you. I think the size of Maryland definitely wins this game over Belmont as well. See, I'm I'm listening to Andy Katz a lot, but I'm gonna go here. I think LSU, and I love Yale. I think this team is going to be a story because everything is going on. I know it's negative, but I think this team will rally. They have unbelievable talent. Louisville and obviously my Spartans, they'll definitely get a chance to have a repeat. Louisville beat Michigan State early in the season. Gonzaga. Well, we stay up here. I want to keep going. No, no, no. I'm going to let you keep going, but let's take the rest of your East bracket and the next two games. So, By the way, you know, his nickname is Smitty, but he could. we could start calling him Chalk. <laughs> well, he, well he, he almost did a Smitty one of those and then just almost went to the, the wrong region. So you, you've got Mike Rhodes' group on OVCU. You've got yes. Duke and, and that guy Zion and the rest of them. But take us through kind of the next two games there. Beginning Can I write Zion? No, I'm going to go with Duke right here. And I think <laughs> the reason why is just this, this because Zion is back. He's playing at an unbelievable level. But right here, I, I have Virginia Tech. I think Buzz and those guys, the way they shoot the basketball, and Buzz has them playing at a high level. And I'm just going to say, VT, so we don't have to go through all that. Maryland LSU, this is a tough one, but I did say LSU, they will rally. I have LSU over Maryland. Maryland has great size, but LSU has even more size in my opinion. 
Louisville, Michigan State. Don't even ask me that, Casey. Who do you think I'm picking? Uh, I would, okay, I would imagine you're going to go Sparty, right? Spartan Dogs. That's because they I, play I, with I, a lot of hard injuries, but Cassius Winston, best point guard in the country. I would think you'd go there, and you mentioned Maryland. Most of the games they play well because they do have that rebounding margin over not most against of the LSU. country. Not, though. Not against LSU. To your point, shut him back. That's my man. guy, Casey. That's my attention, guy. Smitty. Now let's go to the guy who doesn't have to remember his picks because they wrote them in for him while we were dealing with you, Smitty. What do you got, Cassie, on the other side? All right, so... Good matchup here. We got Mike Krzyzewski going against Johnny Dawkins. All right. Duke UCF, coaching matchup, but I'm going with the teacher. Oh, I thought you were going with, you know, UCF. No, no, not yet. Uh, Virginia Tech Liberty in the state of Virginia. I don't think they play often, if at ever. Uh, I'm going Virginia Tech to advance. We got an ACC rematch going on there. And look, I do a lot of big tender in the year. I've wanted to be on that Maryland train, but they've been so befuddling, too many turnovers. I, I got to ride someone. I got to ride someone surprising into the Sweet 16, and I'm going to the Ivy. Look at that. You know it's a little. Casey, go test him. I was just I mean, go test Damn. him, Casey. Go. Andy, all right? Jay, go make sure he's all right. Play. Andy, you okay? I'm just, I'm going for a shocker here. For admissions, you know it's a little late to try and get into Yale. Yes, right? I know okay. that. I never would have. Yeah, all right. Rematch here in the second round in the Big Ten. I'm going Michigan State over Minnesota, and I'll do the same thing with MSU. All right. We are going to leave you there for now. And now you can, Smitty, I know you wanted to go here. No, I'm, I'm waiting for you. No, I don't now you, my point guard. Now you can, well, I'll, we're hoping, yeah, it's been the few and then the far between getting to that last step. Is this the year for Mark Few? We'll find out. How about this next matchup? Syracuse who scares everyone just because obviously of who they're coached by. Yeah, Coach Bayheim in that 2-3 zone, and it is giving everybody problems. My Sparty's last year for sure. But I look at it right now, Gonzaga has a lot of bigs that can handle the basketball. And to beat that zone, you got to have somebody in the middle. If you have somebody in the middle that can pass and rebound the basketball, and they have shooters, so I'm going with the Zags. They're definitely going to advance, advance over here. Then Murray State, Florida State. This one's going to be tough. Sometimes when you have the best player on the floor, and they will have in Murray State and John ja Morant, but I got Florida State. Leonard Hamilton plays 11 guys. They have length. They just lost a tough one to Duke. I think they'll be ready. I'm going Leonard Hammond, FSU. Buffalo, Texas Tech. Nate Oates has done a good job, and I love watching him, but I got to go with Texas Tech. They are just fantastic the way they play and get out and defend, and I think this one's going to come down to open court points, and I give that to Texas Tech. Now, let's see this. Let's, let's pause here. Now, you said chalk. What, what, do you, what do you think is going to happen here? Do we do we go no, job I'm, I'm, or do I'm we go hard? Where do you think he's going? Let's still say he goes chalk. I don't know. We're going, we're going job. Know, or right? We're going hard. Where are we going? You know, I'm going Michigan, and it's tough for me to write Michigan. I don't even know how to write Michigan. I'm gonna shake a little bit. <laughs> Let me see. You write uh, Michigan uh, instead. Michigan. You know, I won't write it good, but I am going, <laughs> and I love John Beeline the way they play, but it won't be good penmanship. I'm going Michigan. Okay, uh, leaving it there. Let's shift over to you. All right, Andy. So. We know, obviously, the story with the Zags. They're in a great position. Maybe it even helped them get a little bit of a scare at what happened with St. Mary's. How do you see this West bracket? All right, so I got Gonzaga, as I mentioned, over FDU. But look, this was a rematch of a couple of years ago when Syracuse went to the Final Four. Gonzaga should have won the game. Syracuse came back and beat the Zags. Rematch, going with the Zags. And to Smitty's point, okay, I will go Zags as well. With Brandon Clark and Rui Hachimura, they can definitely slice that zone. I think Gonzaga wins. This is a phenomenal second round matchup if this occurs, even if we get Marquette over here. But if we go Murray State, Florida State, I just saw Florida State in the ACC final. Love their length and size. I think, for the most part, they'll be able to handle Murray and John Morant. I'm going with a rematch of last year's Sweet 16 game between Gonzaga and Florida State. If you remember, Killian Tilly went through the layup line, got hurt with his hip, couldn't play. One of the reasons Gonzaga lost that game. I think this game, if this happens, this is going to be one of the best games in the second round. you got Buffalo, very physical team. C.J. Massenburg, great score at Texas Tech. Chris Beard, I think, could be the national coach of the year. I love this matchup, but I'm going to stay in my upset trend here. I'm going with the Bulls, okay? Going Buffalo. Now... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Upset. Tr okay. Well, you got Yale up there, so you're. you're I know. I know. I'm okay. going what with are you doing at the here? bottom now? All right. right. Nevada. Nevada, Michigan. I just have not liked the the vibe lately with the Wolfpack. I mean, they just they came out of the gate strong, and then when they got in the Mountain West, it, everything unraveled. They had that Utah State game where they completely unraveled at the end. Uh, so I'm going to go 
with the more disciplined team in Michigan to knock off Nevada and Nevada's chance of repeating as a Sweet 16 team is halted. Let's fill out the rest of this side here all mm -hmm. the way to where we get on that part of the Final Four. So, Smitty, start with Duke against uh, Buzz and those Hokies. Well, Buzz and them beat them without Zion Williams, and I think this will be a fantastic game. I think this will be a close one. I think it comes down to, you know, guard play, and I think Duke will have the, the advantage there, and I think rebounding the basketball. And the best player on the, floor, on the court will be two players from Duke with R.J. Barrett and Zion Williams, so I'm going with Duke. Here, I think here, Michigan State against LSU, Tom Izzo, when you say guard play, Cassius Winston will be able to control tempo. He will not let them get out and run and use their athleticism and their size. And we're going to rebound the basketball. And I think by then, Andy, I hopefully Nick Ward is in better game, I would say, chemistry, because he's in good shape right now. It's just that he has, he's not in a good game flow. I have Michigan State versus Duke. And down here, this one's going to be pretty good. This one, I think the Zags against Florida State, He's going to throw everything at them, but I think their guard play, you saw them against Duke. They will handle this. I got the Zags beat Leonard's Hamilton's Seminoles. Texas Tech, Michigan. Chris Bird, I, the reason why I'm going Texas Tech, Charles Matthews, Andy, they need him to advance. Watching him today, he didn't look bad, but he didn't look himself. They need him to be at least their second leading scorer, and I don't know if he can do that now. Uh, reminder before we shift over to Andy to find out, at least get us to the Elite Eight, uh, you went to... Remind me? Michigan State. And you, and, oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. but I just got, to me, it's Charles Matthews. No, I Matthews. know that. No, and, and, and to his defense, Charles Matthews coming off a right ankle injury. Uh, I was at the Big Ten tournament. He was not, he didn't shoot the ball well at all. And again today, so even though they crushed Minnesota and they didn't need him to be this big time player, to advance, they will. We saw the uh, run that they made a couple of years ago, Walton Jr. and company with the whole mm -hmm. plate system. You never know what's going to inspire or become a distraction. The Wade situation with LSU is going to be interesting to watch to see, Andy, how they play. Let's see where you go. Getting us to the Elite Eight. In Andy York, got yelled Rag beating Duke. He's no, got no, 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 no. <laughs> well, and to your point, look, I could, I could be completely wrong because if LSU gets its mind right, this bracket actually really could open up for them because they have the talent to get all the way to here. I just don't like their vibe right now at all. Okay, so at the top, rematch of the ACC uh, game between Duke and Virginia Tech. Zion Williamson obviously playing at a high level. Don't mention, of course, R.J. Barrett and Trey Jones. And, I mean, they're getting great rotation play. I go with Duke over Virginia Tech. Down here, whether it's Maryland, LSU, Yale, I still advance Michigan State against Duke. The bottom part in the West, rematch. I don't think Florida State gets Gonzaga two years in a row. I'm going to assume that Killian Tilly is nice and healthy for this stretch run. And I know the Texas Tech fans are going to give me a lot of flack. They didn't think I believed in them, and then they ended up winning the Big 12, although I do love Chris Beard as National Coach of the Year, so take that. <laughs> but I got the Bulls versus Michigan. I could see Buffalo advancing here, but here's the key. You've given John Beeline basically from whatever that is from the weekend to the following Thursday, Friday. I'm drawing a blank on when the West is. Uh, actually, it is a Thursday, Saturday, now that I think about it. So you've given him time. When John Beeline has time to scout and prep, look out. So, I am going Michigan back to the Elite Eight as they knock off Cinderella from Buffalo. Before we get to a question halfway kind of through to the at least Elite Eight portion, a couple things to notice. We all know five seed is number one, and so far your, your fives are out, mm -hmm. right, both of you. Other thing, every single year we've had the first four, one of the teams has won a game in the following round. We still don't have any of those yet on either side. Oh, I'm going with Virginia, and I love them, the way they play. And I think what they went through last year, I think they have great balance. I think they have great shooting. I love Guy. He, I mean, he flat out can shoot the basketball. So Virginia over Ole Miss right here. So I'm going there for sure. Next, Oregon, Kansas State. This is the tough one for me, Andy. I love the role Oregon's going on. I just think Kansas State stops that roll. I'm going right there with Kansas State. Just takes out my alma mater right there, right off the bat. He's got Oregon over Wisconsin. Yeah, well, you know, Wisconsin, I think it is, it's, you know, a little bit. But they're here, Purdue, Villanova. I'm still going Jay Wright. I just think Jay has his team. He'll be having them prepared. Purdue is a team. Sorry, Matt Pan, I'm a Big Ten guy, but I have Villanova beating Purdue. 
And it doesn't seem to matter, by the way, who is on a team that Jay Wright has. You might yes. count them out like Syracuse, for example, yes. a year ago. This is going to be good. Go. I mean, this is going to be a physical matchup, in my opinion. But I think it still comes down to Grant Williams will take over. He's about physicality. He will be the most physical. And, and they have guys that can play. And their guard play is fantastic. And they have size. I'm going Tennessee. All right. Uh, clearly uh, wants to continue to be able to be friends with our friend Candace Parker. Let's get. Let's stop <laughs> there. Let's get the four from you in the same okay. spot, Andy. So, kind of take us over right. to where you we'll are with you, over here. UVA. Okay. Uh, are we going to be uh, singing some Tony Bennett or, or or the Blues? Where are we kind of with with Virginia in this side of the bracket? So after last year, I talked to Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome, and mm -hmm. they were determined to work harder than ever in the offseason to not let that happen again. They're not losing to Gardner Webb. Uh, Oklahoma, I had sort of a little deeper in the uh, seed line here. They're trending in the wrong direction. Kermit Davis has done a phenomenal job with Ole Miss, but UVA, they're going to win this game, all right, over Ole Miss. They're just a better team. Uh, as hot as Oregon is, I think they have, might have expended all their energy right now. I think Ethan Happ is finally going to play better because he's not played that well the last couple weeks. I go with the Badgers over there. And this is interesting mm. here. Okay, K-State, Irvine, a lot of people may want to pick Irvine because they did a great job of winning the, the Big West. But they're not 100% healthy right now, the Wildcats, okay? Dean Wade, we don't know his status, if he's going to be able to play at all. Uh, I like the Badgers over K-State, even though they got to the Elite Eight last year. So we got Tony Bennett against, and he was an assistant yes. for his dad, Dick Bennett, when they went to the Final Four in 2000. See so that Wisconsin tie he got. Right, it. I was going to say, it, it, Wisconsin. Yes. I don't like Not the yet. fact that St. Mary's has to come all the way across the country to Hartford to play Villanova. Uh, bad vibe on that. So I got Villanova advancing. Uh, Jeff Jones done a great job battling back from yes. cancer, prostate cancer. Um, the head coach there at ODU taking on Purdue. But I love Carson Edwards here. He's not played as well lately, but he's capable. They have the guards, led by Carson Edwards, to match Phil Booth. I'm going Purdue to take out the defending champs. All right? Iowa not defending well. I like Cincinnati. We saw them beat Houston on Sunday. Tennessee Colgate, a surprise winner of the Patriot. Tennessee gets rocked by Auburn on Sunday. I think Rick Barnes uses it. Grant Williams, high character, great leader for Tennessee. Second year in a row, SEC player of the year. He will have the Vols ready to beat the Bearcats. So I'm going with Tennessee advancing to the Sweet 16. All right, so he's got a, a five still alive to win it all because it, it was Wisconsin. So right. wait for you there. Andy, over here, let's go back to kind of where you're at. Uh, Jay Wright still with that team working and Virginia hanging in. What happens in those two matchups right there? Well, you want me to go here? We, we yeah, let's, let's continue. You want to stay there? We're going we're gonna to stay up there and put the well, next two I'm going in. Virginia, I think, for sure. I mean, I am really riding with this team, Virginia, this year. I think for sure they get a chance to beat Kansas State. This one right here, and Candace Parker's going to love me. I'm going Tennessee. You are? I am, and I think Villanova, they, th this is as far as they can get for me. I, and Tennessee, this team right here, and I can't wait to this matchup, but I'm going Tennessee. I think it's just too much for Villanova, size-wise, experience, and just the overall depth. So I'm going Tennessee, Virginia. Yeah, Villanova players experience, but in different roles than yes. they were in clearly a year ago. Tennessee players more the same roles and maybe learn from what happened. So now let's see kind of same two games. Can't wait to see uh, Virginia against Wisconsin, Andy. <laughs> Come on, Andy. I think you're worried about the over-under on that one, uh, whether or not they go get to 100. I, I, uh, <laughs> well, they, you know, well, clearly, I was actually more worried whether or not you were going to upset the people, your folks with Wisconsin, or the folks with Virginia Tech, with Virginia. I think Virginia is so driven right now to get to that second weekend in the Sweet 16 to erase uh, what occurred a year ago. I just think defensively, Wisconsin struggles to score sometimes, and Virginia the best defensive team in the country. So I got Virginia advancing. This could be a very physical game between Purdue and Tennessee, but I love the leadership. I know we didn't see it on Sunday against Auburn, but throughout the course of the season, Tennessee has bounced back. They rocked it rough, come back and beat Kentucky. I think they'll do the same, lose to Auburn, advance for the second weekend by beating Purdue. All right, so uh, copying uh, just C all the way down the line, not for kids at home. Uh, Virginia, Tennessee, Virginia, Tennessee. Let's kind of go up this way and start you gotta, here. You're not starting with Andy? The, no, well, he goes. He, I wanted to make sure I well, asked the camera's you both already about over Kentucky. There, so. and, and he already has a lot of time. They had in my ears. Enough Andy Cat. So, <laughs> Smitty, uh, Wofford, for people who don't really, this mm -hmm. is a legit basketball team that can really play. You've got them ahead of Seton Hall. Speaking of Nova, again, mm -hmm. we're in that title game with the Big East. How about Wofford, Kentucky? 
Yeah, and I do. And I love Seton Hall, but I think Wofford will beat Seton Hall, and that's going to be a fantastic matchup. But come down to Kentucky. I mean, P.J. Washington is just too big and too strong down there. And the guard play, that's what I think where Kentucky is starting to get better. Those young guys weren't ready earlier. The guard play is matching the bigs inside, so I have Kentucky advancing. Iowa State, a team that does not, and we're seeing it, and you and I saw it when we did the draft together at Monty Morris, they do not turn the ball over. They they will make you make mistakes. They do a lot of the same things. What about those matchups? Well, Iowa State and Andy know this. They had some problems. The players only when you st when I start here, players only mean even though they came out and won, I still don't think they can get over the hump. Houston, they've done a fantastic job. I think they beat them just because they don't turn the ball over at, at all. And that's why I have Houston beating Iowa State. All right. Hopefully, uh, our, our friend Ron is not close enough. Uh, to drive over to the studio before the end of this show, having them ahead of uh, Georgia, State, uh, Georgia State, one of the great personalities and coaches in the game, get back up to number one. UNC against Duke with and without Zion is a discussion we may see play out all the way towards the final, but let's start with them against Iona. What? That's why I got UNC. <laughs> Are they going over Iona? Nothing against Iona, but I have UNC. But this UNC Washington is, will be fantastic, but UNC is just too strong. And I know they lost to Duke their last game, but easily could have won that game, and I thought they was, uh, they, that they will be Duke, but Zion was just too much. I have UNC winning this game over Washington. I think Kobe White has a chance with his size to be able to take over. You need guard play, and he is starting to find his rhythm. This one for me, Andy. This is the 5-12. I have Auburn, and I have Auburn beating Kansas. Kansas have a lot of injuries, a lot of things going on. Bruce Pearl gets his team to be able to get a chance to write to play against UNC. North Carolina. I have Bruce Pearl advancing against Kansas. Sometimes it could be in a win, sometimes in a loss. Tennessee maybe learns from the loss. Auburn maybe pushes mm -hmm. forward with the win. All right, Andy, now you get to kind of show us with Kentucky. Do the same thing. All right, we are the giving bottom you, up. which is why you get from social and ask us and you will receive as long as it's not uh, Smitty talking about the Wolverines. What do you got at the bottom there? So just to reiterate, this I think is going to also be one of the tougher games to pick. Yep. Wofford versus Seton Hall. Miles uh, Powell versus Fletcher McGee. Uh, one of the best shooters, but actually both great shooters. But I got Wofford advancing, America's darling suddenly, and uh, I think people will latch on to them. Against Kentucky, I just think the size will be a little bit too much of an issue for Wofford, as good as Mike Young has done with uh, Wofford this season, the Terriers. I think we're going to see Kentucky advance. All right, so you have the same matchup as Smitty. As, uh, this is called buying time to yeah, the radio. I just drop a phone number. Uh, Iowa <laughs> State and Houston in the next match. I'm going to just got. shift over here. Just a little easier for me to write here. Uh, Iowa State, Houston. Uh, I agree with uh, Smitty. Iowa State's been all over the map this season. Very hard to predict. Houston, yes, they lost to Cincinnati in the uh, third time they played them in the Sunday AAC final. Love the, def the defensive effort for them. And think about how they lost last season, mm -hmm. okay? Unbelievable shot by Jordan Poole of Michigan, yeah. something we we'll, may never see again, or if we do, it certainly will be in the annals of NCAA tournament history. So I think Houston avenges that and gets to the Sweet 16 after what occurred last year in the second round against Michigan. So coming up top here, this Auburn-Kansas game, Bruce Pearl taking on Bill Self's crew. I agree, Kansas inside is an issue. Can they defend the three? Obviously, Auburn loves to shoot a ton of them. I like Smitty's pick as well. I'm going with Auburn. How could you not like them after what you saw on Sunday against Tennessee and Nashville? This will be a very physical game. Sam Merrill of Utah State, who's the player of the year in Mountain West Conference, against Carolina. By the way, I don't like the uh, mojo right now in Washington. The zone is getting shredded. Oregon just trashed them in the Pac-12 tournament title game. So, very physical game, but I think Utah State will have a hard time, even though they beat Nevada's speed, keeping up with UNC. So I got Carolina advancing. All right, so on both both brackets here mm -hmm. and on both sides of that half for Andy, number five, stayed alive for a bit. Wisconsin eventually went out, but Auburn still there on both sides. Smitty, let's go to you. They get the Tar Heels. Yeah, I think Bruce Pearl has done a fantastic job, and they play extremely hard. There's and a they, butt coming here, isn't there? Yeah, it, it's a butt. That butt is because you're playing UNC. When you want to play fast, Andy said it, UNC – plays extremely fast and I think when you start talking about the way Kobe White pushes it the way Cameron shoots the basketball and I love Luke May he has been totally solid I have UNC beating Auburn and then down on the bottom Houston defends they play extremely well but I got Kentucky winning this game I think it comes down to I don't know if Houston will be able to rebound the basketball with Kentucky so I'm going with 
Kentucky here, Calipari gets his team, even though these young guys lost to Duke early. He gets them, as you can see, back to the Elite Eight. Sometimes experience on the fly, and look, beginning of the season doesn't matter. It's what happens at the end. So, really, the only one shot here for the five. Bruce Pearl and Auburn against UNC. Do you have it going any differently? I do not. Uh, I have Carolina taking out Auburn because, as you know, a lot of times, as they say, uh, it's not great to... Uh, you know, if a team wants to run, to also do the same thing. And I think Auburn, you know, was going to want to get up and down with Carolina, and I think that's the wrong way to beat them. And I think Carolina can match them, can defend them on the three-point line because they've got quicker players, or as quick. I like Carolina. Now, who was they? Because I was going to – did you get that one, Smitty? Uh, you if, know, if, coaches, if they, critics. If they want to run, you know, you know, do the same thing. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, good. What's at the bottom over there? Uh, look, this is going to be, I think, a great – Sweet 16 game. Kelvin Sampson, John Calipari, great matchup. Houston will be able to defend Kentucky. I want to go there. I want to pick this upset because I think Houston has the ability to knock out Kentucky, but I can't. I'm going to go <laughs> with a Kentucky. I like Carolina. how you let. I like. I like, I like how you let us on. Spell. Kentucky, Carolina rematch. Why don't you take me through these two? Okay. And then we'll go to Andy there, and then you could do like your dosi do over to this side. We'll do the other side of the bracket. Well, so I'll start here. Virginia, Tennessee, and I think this is going to be great. The problem I have with Virginia is scoring the basketball. Can they score enough against the elite teams when I start talking about now playing against Tennessee? I think Tennessee has a chance because of they can score and the size, the rebound, the basketball. I have Tennessee beating Virginia. Candace is going to love me for yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, Parker. this is clearly. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to root. If you have them that. playing UNC, I should just quit now. I wouldn't want to be here for any of that. Go ahead. Well, you know, you look at this Kentucky UNC, <laughs> you, you can't take away. This one right here will come down to guard play, I think, and being able to shoot the three ball. And for me, I think when you start to be able to shoot the three ball, you have two teams that are just fantastic, being able to make shots. I think UNC beats Kentucky because they've had to shoot the three ball better. All right, the heels and the vols on the heels of that. Smitty switch sides. Andy, you're up on that same half Yeah, Andy, let me hear it. For the record, we have not discussed our bracket in the immediate moments after it was released. No, we definitely we, did we not. We did not. I, I got away from you, Andy. All right, so if we get Virginia, Tennessee, Tony Bennett, Rick Barnes, uh, two veteran teams. Look, Virginia getting to the Sweet 16, uh, would be an accomplishment after what happened a year ago. But this team certainly thinks they can win the national championship. But I just think this is, once again, maybe the wrong team for them to face. This team will handle adversity. I know they didn't do it well like, on Sunday in the SEC title game. But I love Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, Jordan Bone. They've got experienced guys at the right positions. I think Tennessee advances right here. Let me ask you a real quick. Oh, what did I say? I said the... Uh, and, yes, you did. You, no, you said it right. Yeah, so but I, I do want to ask you one, and I'll, I'll break it. Right, so yeah, to the Elite Eight. Break the rules for a second, because you're coming off losing to a 16. No, that's advancing out of the Elite that, That's the Elite Eight, to the Final Four. Final four. Yes, see, he had it right, and then he yes. just kind of Sorry. Like, <laughs> quit while you're behind only a little. Um, so, Virginia <laughs> last year, they had the loss, but you said you're an accomplishment, right? To the 16. So how do you kind of play the dichotomy of that? Because I meant to the say the elite. Overall, I meant to say the elite. But, but it, would that be an accomplishment, or do you think their goals are still, hey, look, who cares about that? Where we're seated, we need to get to the Final Four. Well, let's first say this, okay? Schools and coaches should not be defined by whether or not you get here. Right. Because it's incredibly difficult, as Smitty knows. I mean, look, the last Big Ten team to win a title was Michigan State in 2000. We're coming up on almost 20 years mm -hmm. since the Big Ten has even won one of these. So it's incredibly difficult. Yes. Do they have the talent to win a national championship? Sure. Should they get to a Final Four? Well, it's hard. It's very hard to do. And if they get to the Elite Eight, I think that's a great season. By the way, they've had a phenomenal season before any of this tournament starts. All right, I like it. Show me the bottom. UNC, Kentucky, what do you got? So I think actually we're going to have something similar to happen last year in the Midwest. Remember in Omaha, the Duke-Kansas game was the best game of the tournament. I think we could have the best game of the tournament right here in Kansas City. Okay, uh, Roy Williams, former coach at Kansas. He's going to have a lot of following there uh, with Carolina playing in Kansas City against Kentucky. I really am vacillating with this one back and forth, but I am going to go with a little bit more experience on Carolina over Kentucky, um, even though they have an inexperienced point guard in terms of years as a freshman, Kobe White. Uh, I like the White matchup over Hagens here. Uh, I am going to go with Carolina 
to the Final Four, which, by the way, in the preseason, very few people outside of the Carolina locker room had Carolina yeah. in the Final I don't have to predict the games. I will predict slowest media and most sweating in the elevator, that barbecue in Kansas City. <laughs> Difficult to deny, Smitty. Go ahead, take me through the other side. Give me the Well, final. I'm going to start here. You know what I mean? When you, when you look at Chris Beard, Texas Tech, it's just a fantastic job to be able to get to that E-Late. Gonzaga's Mark Few, I, I just think experience. I think, you know, bigs. Been there. I love the way they played all year. Even though they lost in their, big, in their tournament, I, I'm still going with the Zags over Texas Tech. All right, got the Zags in to the Final Four. Duke, Zion against Sparty. Cassius Winston will be the best guard in this game, in yes. my opinion. And I know they, you look at Jones, will put a lot of pressure on him, but he's used to that. I think it comes down now to be able to rebound the basketball, and that's what Michigan State does. So give them an advantage there. I think overall talent, Duke, they have more guys that can go get you 20 or 30, but I think what hurts Duke against Michigan State will be their bench. I don't like Duke's bench, and it is Bowden back, Andy? Uh, not yet. We don't know if he will be. Hopefully, because they want all kids to be able to play. Bo if Bowden's back, this will be tough for Michigan State. But if not, I got to go with Michigan State. Hey, uh, I mean, Casey, I, I'm looking for going. the numbers that show me how there that. There we go. I, I, hey, if, if you, all right. it, it's really it's sticking say this. one bracket versus everyone at the school being hey, hey, right? hey, hey, this is the number two seed that has uh -huh. a good chance. I'm just going to give you a little tease here. Okay. This is pretty bizarre because we don't see each other that often. I'm pretty sure that's a spoiler, not a tease, if you are telling us. I'm just thing. saying, we're thinking a lot alike. Okay. Now, we didn't get all the way there, but we're getting close. Okay, go ahead. All right, I'm going to start at the bottom as well. So this was supposed to be the matchup last year yep. in L.A. Because Gonzaga, we thought, would have beaten Florida State. Killing Tilly, I just told you, of course, what happened. So they didn't get a chance to play Michigan. Michigan beats Florida State to get to the Final Four. This is in Anaheim, once again in California. Can Michigan do it two years in a row in the state of California? No. I'm going with Gonzaga to get back to the Final Four, second time in three seasons at the top. Okay, here we go. I agree totally with Smitty on this. I've always had a concern, as great a season as Trey Jones has had, Trey Jones, like his brother Tyus, doesn't have a Quinn Cook, okay? Tyus had Quinn Cook. Trey does not have someone else, so he doesn't have two guards to run at Cassius Winston, Big Ten Player of the Year. But I think, I agree with you, I think the difference will be the fact that you've got, now Nick Ward is back. May not be 100%, but that's five fouls. So that's Nick Ward's five fouls. That's Xavier Tillman's five fouls. That's Kenny Goins' five fouls. That's 15 fouls to run right at Zion Williamson, okay? And really try to body him up. He can get in foul trouble. I'm going Michigan State to shock, and it will be a shocker because I think America will think Zion Williamson will be in Minneapolis and expect it. But I am going to Tom Izzo getting back to the Final Four, Michigan State, Gonzaga, Carolina, Tennessee. And to the point... And he's been cheating off my paper. Oh, no, I'm way over here. <laughs> to the point, though, more often than not, the best player in the tournament is a guard. It's point guard play, guard play shooting. Duke shooting the basketball and sometimes a rag. That's right. That's the interesting part, because if you're not relying on Zion to carry you by himself, mm -hmm. you think about Barrett, you think about Cam Reddish and some of that group. There have been games they've shot well. There have been games they've shot not very well. Yeah, well. And, and as much as I was impressed, and I've seen them a couple times, but as great as they looked in the ACC tournament, let's not forget, and I know Zion Williamson wasn't playing, but they should have lost to Wake Forest, uh, one of the worst teams in the ACC. So they've gone a little bit up and down, obviously. And I know he didn't play in that game, and it's a big difference. But those other guys can't carry as much as obviously he can. Let's look at the final four. Let's get to your championship game. And Smitty, you can give me a winner as well. I mean, feel free if you want to put like a score number in there and try and. Uh, we got, we're going all there. But, but go ahead. UNC Tennessee, I'll start there. Roy Williams, Rick Barnes will be fantastic. Kobe White, you know, obviously going up against all these experienced guards with Tennessee is going to be a matchup. But I think it comes down to Admiral Schofield. And Grant will get a chance to be physical against Carolina. This one's going. This one's a tough one. I went back and forth, but I'm. I, I can. Candace is going to love this. She's going to start calling me right now. But I'm going Tennessee over. Well, she's not going to like my bracket. Yeah, she is. <laughs> But she would never thought I'd pick Tennessee because we go back and forth. Well, she needs a bounce back for our studio show as much as Virginia does in the tournament because yes. we all remember her on the ground literally yes. watching Tennessee 
get knocked out. So by the Ramblers. We'll stay in her chair this time. So you've got Tennessee. Who are they playing? This one they played earlier. This was a for seriously in Minnesota. They've had a right, scrimmage, a scrimmage game. Scrimmage. And, yep, yep. Andy, and they said this was fantastic. And Gonzaga won that scrimmage. I think now, unless Gonzaga's healthy, and Michigan State won't will be about Langford. But this is back in Minneapolis. This is Big Ten country. It will be a lot of Spartans there. I'm going MSU. Reason why Tom Mizzo, just like Andy said, hasn't won one since 2000. He gets back to be able to win a national championship. So maybe it's like the guy at the uh, roulette table. You put it on, I, it was 17 for me. It didn't hit, got to hit eventually. Then you walk away and there's 17. All right, MSU Tennessee, who you got? Rick Barnes, I love you, but come on. You, my Spartans get to the national championship. We're going Michigan State. This is out of, I love this matchup. Candace will definitely be playing, paying for dinner. Go on, Sparty, come on now, Sparty. Spartan dogs win this one. Michigan State wins it all. Let's see how you did here, Andy. All right, I will start on this side as well. Once again, I think this is a great matchup. You got Luke May and Cam Johnson, Kenny Williams. We mentioned Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield. Experience matters. Keep harping on that. I just think Tennessee's been more consistent. I like the Vols. I've liked them throughout the course of the season. I think Grant Williams is the star in this game. All right, so uh, the law firm of Williams and Schofield into the final both okay. brackets. So we finally have an agreement, but not all the way, all right? I went with Gonzaga at the beginning of the season uh, as my team that I thought could win the national championship. You asked Mark Few who his most important player was. He didn't probably want to answer because he didn't want to offend anyone else. I think it's Brandon Clark. Brandon Clark has been phenomenal. Transfer from San Jose State, great rim protector, runs the floor well. If he could just be a little bit more assertive, I think they've got the size to contend with Michigan State. They can shoot the basketball if Zach Norvell is on. I think Gonzaga gets back to the national championship game. Mm. And by the way, this was one of the best games of the regular season. Gonzaga, Tennessee, in Phoenix, yep. early in the season, won on a three-pointer by Admiral Schofield. So the rematch from Phoenix to Minneapolis, and I'm going with the Zags. My preseason pick to win the national championship